She is a woman of God. She is anointed. She is called to spread the gospel. And she is a spiritual hearted encourager. She is Pastor Ashley Nation. Welcome, my sister Ashley. How are you today? I'm doing well. Hello. Awesome. Hello. <laughs> Ashley, this is going to be so easy for me. You know why, right? This, well, you don't know why? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, because you and I, we talk very often and I, I consider you as one of my sisters and uh, it's going to be an easy, easy, easy conversation. Yes, I was going to say it's going to be just like one of our dinner hangouts. Exactly. I agree. But I just first and foremost want to say thank you. Thank you for sowing a seed into Sister Sowing Seeds. Thank you for always supporting me since day one. You know, if I could rewind the clock. I remember a conversation that you and I had many, many years ago, and you really spoke life over the ministry. And from that day, um, you've continued to support Sister So and Season. It means so much to me. So thank you so much. Of course, of course. <laughs> so would you please do the honor with a introduction? There may be someone that doesn't know you. I doubt it. <laughs> but for those who do not know you, can you please do an introduction for us? Yes, yes. Uh, but first of all, I just want to say thank you for having me on Absolutely. Look Who's Talking with Ramonda Bacon. I'm like, oh my goodness, I've, I made it in life. Stop it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just very grateful to uh, be a part of this interview and just a part of Sister Sowing Seeds. And just as you said, I just remember when you first told me about Sister Sowing Seed, when it was just an idea that hadn't even come to fruition yet. And um, I just even in that moment was like, wow, what an amazing vision that mm. you have just for women and empowering women and uh, reaching women inside and outside the church. And so I just mm. uh, value that. And I appreciate that about you and just your heart and your vision for Sister Sowing Seeds. Um, as far as my introduction, I'm sure that there are plenty of people out there <laughs> who do not know who I am. Uh, my name is Ashley Nation. Uh, I operate in a number of different roles. Wow. Right. Um, I work Many for hats. a Christian community development organization in Oakland called Harbor House. Uh, there I am the director of leadership development and spiritual formation. And a lot of my work is primarily with high school students and middle school students as well. Um, I am also one of the uh, co-directors for small groups at my church, which is Encounter Church in San Leandro. Yes. Uh, that is a recent role that I have stepped into, but I've been at my church for about four years now and uh, just have some amazing pastors and leaders there that I get to serve. Um, I'm also a student. <laughs> Um, and I'm happy to say that I will not be a student for very Yay! long because I'm going to be graduating <laughs> in just about three months from now. Yeah. Uh, but I'm currently working on my uh, master's degree in intercultural studies at Fuller Theological Seminary. Um, it's been a long ride, a long journey, but I'm glad mm -hmm. to finally be crossing the finish line after summer. Um, I'm a friend, a sister, a mentor, yep. a woman of God. Yep. <laughs> A young lady out in these streets just trying to show people the love of Christ. And Amen. so that's who Amen. I am. So awesome. So awesome. And I, I believe, honestly, that's why um, our spirits, although you knew my daughters before you knew me, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's how our spirits connected because I know that you have a love for God's people and your heart is just so big. And um when you spoke um, at one of my events, the uh, uh, Breakthrough Brunch, you know, I've heard you speak several times before, but I definitely wanted you to be a part of that event. And you just, you're just so real. And also for those who don't know, Ashley is funny too. She, and you probably got a little taste of that, but she is so funny, but she's funny. She, she, when, when we have lunch or dinner, whenever we meet, um, I, I feel that, my relationship with you, I can be very transparent and you're going to tell me the truth. You're going to tell me, you know, 
you're not just going to agree with me. And that's what I, I really respect and appreciate about our relationship. But your heart for women is why I really wanted to talk to you today, because you know, Sister so and sees foundation. But if we could go back a little bit, let's talk about you growing up. Your mom is phenomenal. I know your mom. I've heard your mom speak. I had the opportunity to open up prayer for your mom's message at uh, a church that she spoke at. Mm -hmm. And uh, also hanging out with her. You know, she's so beautiful. And your dad, I understand he's a pastor as well. So let's talk about growing up. How did you grow up and your grandmother who is just, man, if you guys were to see Ashley's grandmother, you'd be like, no, like she is, just, <laughs> she is so beautiful and just vibrant and everything is just the Lord just all over her. So let's talk about your upbringing. Yeah. Um, so my upbringing, I uh, was born and raised in the beautiful city of Oakland, uh, which I love dearly. Yes. Uh, my family just has strong roots here in the city of Oakland. Um, I grew up in a family that uh, believed in God and we were heavily involved just in church. Uh, my grandfather was the pastor of our church growing up. Um, so I had the benefit of being raised by parents that were very God fearing, um, that love God, that put God first, uh, make sure that all of their children were in church and were serving God. Um, and with that came some advantages and some disadvantages. Um, I would say I definitely feel like I can attribute my um, strong faith to the roots that were established by uh, my parents and my family. Um, I know that there is no way that I would be where I am today without uh, the prayers of my mom, without the support of my mom and my dad, um, and just the ways in which they have just raised me and the things that they've taught me over the years. Uh, but at the same time, you know, being someone that uh, grew up going to church all my life and, you know, having family that was always involved in ministry, uh, you know, that presented a lot of challenges. Yeah. Um, it presented <laughs> challenges in such a way that actually in high school, I made the decision to completely walk away from God um, and to just walk away from the faith. And at that point, I stopped going to church. Um, I had still believed that God was real, but I just felt like I had seen so much uh, hypocrisy and just negative things in the church. And, you know, these people that I looked up to at one point were just living lives that I felt like were very contrary to what they were teaching and preaching mm -hmm. on Sundays. And so, um, you know, I just decided to walk away from God. Um, and this was around the time that I was getting ready to enter college. So I kind of went down this very <laughs> destructive path in college, uh, being a young lady that grew up in a very strict Christian home with a lot of rules. Uh, when I went off to college, I wanted to experience life and experience life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. um, and I went through some very dark times at that time in my life. Uh, but at the same time, I always felt like God is I, the way I describe it is I always feel like I was running away from God and he was chasing me. So even though I knew that there were all these things that I had experienced at church and I began to project those things onto God, um, I knew that God was drawing me. He was still drawing me back, um, even in the midst of not serving him and going through a lot of crazy situations in life as a young adult. Um, and so it was my sophomore year in college that I actually uh, gave my life back to the Lord and just decided I was tired of running away from God. And, yeah. you know, I had tried all these crazy things and none of them were helping. None of them were satisfying the deeper longings that I had inside. Um, and what I began to discover that I didn't have previously was a very genuine and authentic relationship with God. Yeah. And I think that that was what caused me to walk away uh, from my faith, because even though I had family members and um, I had my parents who instilled biblical values into me, who made sure I was in church consistently serving and even leading as a child and as a youth, um, I didn't have that genuine relationship with God. And, and, you know, because I didn't have that, I wasn't sustained in my faith. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until I kind of left and experienced life a little bit and then decided to give my life to Christ. And um, the Lord has had me on a crazy, crazy good journey <laughs> ever since then. You know, I tell you this, Ashley, like every time I speak to someone on this platform, I, I'm just so amazed 
by the stories, the journeys that we've taken, the journeys that are actually our testimonies to share. You know, I feel like God, he allows us to go through these things in life. You know, it's no, he's not surprised that we're going to take this, this detour. And, and I feel like just from what you have spoken and what you've experienced, this is something that now you take and you share with the people that you mentor, especially during these times where people are confused. They don't know which way to turn, you know, so much is happening around us. So by you being a young adult, what keeps you anchored? Like what really keeps you rooted in God with everything that's happening around us? And I'm just even just getting chills just by saying that because I think that's important to for someone to hear what keeps you holding on to God's unchanging hand. Um, I would definitely say first and foremost, I think just like I said, having that genuine, authentic relationship, relationship. with God, like you think of it as you know, a relationship with a person, when you really love someone, when you really value someone, um, you know, you, you want to please them, you want to do uh, what is right by them, for them, you yeah. care about them. Um, and so I think that for me, as I've continued to cultivate my own relationship with God over the years, um, you know, I don't want to engage in activities or do things that are going to hinder my relationship with God. Um, I think also, to be honest, even in my upbringing, I've seen a lot of my family members go down uh, very dark paths in their life. And I think that one thing that I so appreciate and value about my parents is, um, you know, they decided that for their children that they did not want their children to go down, yeah. um, you know, certain paths in life. And so they were very intentional about, you know, teaching us and showing us a different way and how to make different choices and decisions. Um, and I think for me, growing up, seeing those different examples, um, you know, seeing people in my family battling alcoholism, yeah. seeing people in my family being in and out of jail and that being a very normal thing, yeah. you know, I decided that I didn't, I didn't want that. I didn't want to go down that path. And so I think that <clears throat> even as a young girl, I knew and I understood that if I really put God for, first, that he would protect me from um, you know, going down a path that I didn't want to go down. So I think that that's uh, a part of it, just my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, I think another part is just um, my influence. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's always been um, a vision and a desire of mine to pour back into young people in my city. I think I've always had a heart to be an example. I wanted to be someone who was still investing in Oakland, even as I got older, <laughs> no matter how old I got, I was just like, I just want to be able to invest in young people in my city. And I want to be able to show young people who come from a similar background where, you know, there's been a dangerous path charted before them or exemplify for them and show them, you know, there's another way, there's another option. Yeah. Um, and so I think that because that has been something that has been valuable to me, um, I've always done my best, even though I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. um, to even be a good example to the young people that I feel like are under my influence because um, ultimately I just want them to experience the hope and the freedom that I feel like I found in my relationship with Christ throughout these years. And I think that if I could help be a conduit for that, for young people, uh, to me, dreams fulfilled. Yes. So. Amen. That's so good. You said so much. Oh my goodness. So one thing you touched on, which, you know, is what I think about very often is generations, you know, changing it. It doesn't have to be a cycle. What, what we may have account, encountered in our lives or what have you, we don't have to carry it on to the next generation. I, that is, you know, me, you know, my grandchildren, that is my prayer. Like I, I really, try and we're not perfect, but I really desire and I pray daily to live my life as an example. You know, they have their parents, but Ama, you know, you know, they're just like they sponges, like they think about everything I say. Every word is very important that's being, you know, spoken to them or over them. So uh for you, you know, I think that's very key to to really talk about that because a lot of people are stuck with people that have said, oh, you're not going to be anything, or you're just like your mom, or you're just like your dad. And that is not true. That is a lie from the enemy, you know, and I feel that a lot of our youth are stuck in that cycle. And to have someone like you or, you know, uh, a mentor, someone that they can talk into, someone that can speak life, 
um, into them is very, very important. And yeah. then you also spoke about, actually, we can tell someone all day long how good God is, how good he is, what he'll do for us. But until they have that experience for themselves. Yep. I just, I can't say that enough. I, I say that often. I think about it. I meet with a lot of people, you know, I, I, I'm an encourager. I try to speak, but until they really seek him, seek yeah. him for themselves, they will never have that encounter, that life encounter, you know, with him that would change everything. Yeah. So I know you, and I know that you are, you have a, a beautiful sister circle around you sisters that uh girlfriends but they're sisters you know spiritually that you you guys have been friends for ages since i met you how important is it for you to have that in your life extremely important and i cannot <laughs> stress extremely um i think very similar to what you said earlier just about um, having people in your life that will tell you the truth, who won't just tell you what you want to hear. Um, I think that it has definitely taken some time and some refining, but I think that um, that close sisterhood that you're speaking of that I have now, um, I think that it even took a while for that to form and to mature. And so for me, for people that I let into my close circle, um, those are people that have certain qualities and characteristics. You gotta be loyal. You gotta be ready to tell me when I'm being a hot mess and I need to have several seats. I need to have the freedom to tell you when you are a hot mess and you need right. to have several seats. You know, the Bible talks about iron sharpening iron. And so we have to be at a place where we can do that for each other because we love each other so much that we want God's best for each yes. other. And so we push each other to grow and we challenge each other when we see each other going down a wrong path we don't just you know avoid the situation or not say anything um, and to be honest I think that I've had a lot of you know I'm gonna say more shallow relationships like that mm -hmm. and you know I've really had to weed some of those relationships out of my inner circle and my closer circle because if I'm really gonna pursue the plans that God has for me and what he wants for my life I have to be able to surround myself with people who have the same vision as far as wanting to pursue God's best for their life um, now obviously I have tons of acquaintances yes. <laughs> close acquaintances and you can be all across the board I don't care if you know Jesus or not like we good let's right. kick it um, but I think that for, you know, my close inner circle who I'm going to be really vulnerable and transparent with, um, you know, we got to be on the same page. We have to have some of the same values. And I definitely feel like my sisterhood has helped to keep me rooted because, yeah. you know, in those moments where we're going through things that are difficult or challenging, um, we have the Lord, but sometimes the Lord speaks through people and he puts right. people in our lives to support us, to encourage us. And so I feel like that sisterhood that I've established has just been extremely important for me, um, especially in my own journey of growth and development and just the challenges of being refined, going through right. the refining process where, That's you good. know, some of the old things that don't need to be there are, are chipping away and you're developing and learning new habits and new skills. Uh, you need people that are going to be by your side and and have grace with you and encourage you and love you in the process. And, um, you know, I want to be able to reciprocate that for them as well. So that's the that sisterhood has has been a big one. So I think for me, I would say for me, I have to have friends that are reliable, dependable, and we have to have reciprocity in our relationship. Um, mm -hmm. If we don't have reciprocity, then, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to dip on out the inner circle and go into the close acquaintance category. So, <laughs> and I also and that's okay. think it is, it really is. And I also think that it's, it's, it's important to have friends where you can just be you because you're, you're pulled and stressed in so many different directions. You know, you have so much responsibility um, on you um, with the many hats that you wear. And so to be able to come and just lay all that down and just like, exhale and also to be able to be refreshed by them too right yeah. and so i i appreciate that and and i will i say that to say that i feel like the more and i'm not trying to infringe on your sister circle but i'm saying that the more you and i meet the more 
comfortable. And the more I just like, I don't know, just I feel like, you know, I'm, I walk away from your presence feeling refreshed. So I, I do value and I, I really think that having accountability sisters is very uh, crucial or is essential with our walk with Christ too. Yeah. So what's next for you? Like you're doing all these things, you're gonna be getting your master's soon. What is next for Ashley Nation? Oh, that is a great question. Um, well, I'll say immediately what's next is going to be a little bit of rest. Mm, that's good. Um, you know, I feel like for me this last year, um, you know, dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic uh, because of my line of work, uh, that was not a time for me to just retreat and be at home. Um, we were running virtual programs. We started running um, in-person programs in small stable groups. So I felt like in some ways we really hit the ground running at work. Um, I don't know why I decided in the midst of a pandemic to go back to school and take <laughs> on all this extra work. Um, but I just feel like this last year I've been doing so much. And um, I think I really just wanna take in just this moment of I think crossing the finish line with school um, and really just being open to what God has for me next. Um, and I think sometimes we can be so quick to just jump into the next thing. Right. Uh, but I really just kind of want to take a little bit of time to rest and just kind of hear the Lord. Um, I definitely have a sense of direction as far as um, where I want to go and what I want to do. But, you know, I think I'm continuing to submit that to the Lord and trust right. his process and his plan for me. Um, I can say ever since 2004, when I made that decision to give my life back to Christ, mm. um, every major decision, every major direction that I have gone in my life, every major turn I've taken, um, it's been led of the Lord. Mm. <laughs> I have not made any of these decisions. I haven't decided, oh, this sounds like a good job. Oh, going to school sounds like a good idea. No, all these things, the Lord was like, go do this, go over yeah. here, go over there. And so I know that the Lord has something very specific specific for me. Um, and so I feel like my responsibility is to be faithful, uh, to finish the first thing that he has put before me and he will lead me to the next because we know that the Lord, he does not like to give us blueprints. No. <laughs> he wants us to step out in faith so that he yes. can really give us the next step. Um, so right now I'm just, you know, with all the mini hats that I'm wearing, just trying to serve faithfully and finish. And I'm going to enter into a, a brief, brief season of just resting. Um, and I, I don't, I don't fully know what's next. We'll, mm, we'll see, yeah. but I I'm confident that the Lord has something very specific. I feel like he's confirmed that even just in the last couple months. Uh, so we'll see what's next. Yeah. I, you know, I, I can't wait and I know whatever it is, is going to be anointed and uh, you're going to just flourish in Jesus name with the next chapter that he has for you. I'm so excited for you. And I think also what's very important is the, the leadership that you're under. I mean, Pastor Steve and Pastor Portia, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, man and woman of God. And um, I, I visited your church, love the worship, the word, just awesome. So you want to talk a little bit about your role there too at your church and your pastor's? Yes. Um, well, first of all, I just absolutely love my pastors. Um, I always tell people they are a gift that I didn't even know I needed. Mm. Um, <laughs> again, another choice, you know, that I didn't make. The Lord mm. told me to go to this church to serve under them. And I was just like, what? <laughs> um, I was a little nervous, but then when I got there, I was just like, oh my goodness, <laughs> why did I, why didn't I just jump when the Lord told me, you know, I was kind of straggling a little, little bit, you know, moving off, slow dragging my feet. I was like, girl, you should have been running. Um, but they are just amazing people. Yeah. What um, I always say about them is that I've sat under a lot of preachers, but I haven't sat under a lot of shepherds and they really have a shepherd's heart. They really care for people. They really love people well. Um, and I mean, they really just challenge and encourage me to love people uh, like Christ wants us to love yeah, people. Um, as far as my role at the church, <laughs> it's kind of shifted and morphed over the last uh, four years. Um, 
more recently, myself and um, a couple others, we have become the co-directors of our small groups at our church. Um, our church actually launched uh, small groups in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, we knew that there were a lot of people that were in isolation. Yeah. Um, as we know, a lot of people dealing with depression, a lot of people dealing with a lot of issues. And, you know, we were not going to let... <laughs> Uh, restrictions on mm -hmm. meeting in person stop us so whether you were available via zoom whether you're available in person you know we wanted to extend the opportunity for people to be able to come together to gather um, to be in discipling relationships um, and so yeah over this last actually it was last month officially um, became one of the co-directors for our small groups um, so it's been very exciting uh, we've seen a lot of growth just even in a short time. We're actually meeting tomorrow to figure out how we are going to get more groups going because we have so many people that are signing up and wanting to be a part. Um, but it's just been just a great journey, just seeing what God is doing at Encounter Church in San Leandro, being a part of it. Um, God has just been using our pastors in just crazy, amazing ways. Yes. Um, and I have just learned and grown so much um, so and you know my pastors have also been a source of healing for me in a lot of ways um, and I'm just so grateful for them I'm grateful to serve them I, I, I love serving leaders where they just make it easy to serve yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah it's been it's been a great experience yeah. and I'm excited for what's happening with our groups and just what's happening in our church overall yeah, that's pretty amazing. You know what I forgot to ask you, um, you know, at your job, what you do now, you spoke about the kids, I forget the ages, but I know that they're young children. Actually, like, how, how do you, can you share like an encounter there, like where you know that God used you in a certain situation while at work? Mm -hmm. Can you, is there something that has happened? Cause I know on my job, when I go out and I meet with clients, God shows up some type of way. And I'm like, okay, God really here right now. So yeah. has there, I'm sure there has been situation that has happened. So care to share anything with us? Yes. Um, so this last year we offered a leadership development internship for high school students um, and it was in person. And so we had a very small stable group that would meet uh, on a weekly basis with me. Um, and so one of the young ladies <laughs> that is uh, a part of our internship, um, her boyfriend passed away. Mm -hmm. um, he was the victim of gun violence. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course she was very distraught over the mm -hmm. passing of her boyfriend. Um, her parents were very, um, I would even say relieved in some senses because they just didn't support um, his lifestyle, they didn't like that their daughter was in a relationship with this young man. And so, you know, it was, it was very hard for her to be going to be grieving and going through a very difficult process and for her parents to feel a sense of relief rather mm -hmm. than, you know, comforting her and encouraging her. Um, and so for one of our uh, leadership seminars, <clears throat> um, I decided that we were going to have um, a time to talk about sitting in difficult emotions and mm -hmm. talking about uh, grief. And so, um, and we were all gonna uh, make some uh, cards and uh, put it at the memorial of this young lady's boyfriend who had passed away. And so um, as we were talking about sitting in uncomfortable emotions and sitting in discomfort and grief, uh, we kind of opened it up for people to share about a time when they have had to um, sit in, a, in an uncomfortable moment or sit in grief. And so um, one of another student started sharing about how her dad had passed away a few years ago and mm. um, she never even talked to anybody about it. You know, she just kind of pretended like it didn't happen and she like stuffed all her feelings. Um, and it just kind of was this ripple effect of students mm. just opening up, sharing about very uh, deep things that they had walked through, very deep grief that they had encountered and, you know, feeling like they didn't have a space to be able to be honest and be vulnerable and talk about those different feelings. Um, and it's so funny because, you know, of course, in my planning, I wasn't planning for our conversation to fully go that direction. I wasn't mm -hmm. planning for them to be so open. Um, but, you know, I just let the Lord steer the yes. direction of our time together. <laughs> 
And, you know, um, it was just amazing just to see them open up and share some really deep things and um, just to be able to encourage them and, you know, even pray for them because yeah. when we're going through grief and we're going through loss, whether we know, believe, accept Jesus or not, like we'll take a prayer. Yeah. So, you know, that was my <laughs> opportunity to uh, be able to offer prayer to those who wanted it. And, you know, they all wanted prayer. Mm -hmm. And so um, I definitely feel like there are some, there has been some deep moments this last year in particular. I think this pandemic kind of put us in a very unique situation because, you know, we could no longer take for granted the um, option to meet in person. So mm -hmm. I felt like the relationships that I was able to build with um, our high school students specifically this last year, um, they just got so deep. We just got a chance to have um, conversations that I normally would not get to have throughout the school year. Um, I was only working with uh, 10 to 15 interns this last year, whereas usually I'd be working with 48 interns mm. um, on a normal school year. Yeah. So the relationships went deep. Like yeah. we were able to have conversations um, about God and about faith, and they were able to ask me questions. Um, so even in the midst of the pandemic, like God was still moving, like he was yeah. still like orchestrating these divine appointments, these conversations that I was able to have with youth, um, just about God and just faith. Um, and so, yeah, there, I'm, that was one moment, but That's I felt like this last year, there were significantly more moments than yes. there has been in my role. Um, at amazing, Harvard. amazing, great segue to the woman in the mirror. This is why I, I really want you to speak, and I'm so happy that you're speaking on Monday, um, because I feel that God is going to use you so mightily because you have so much wisdom, and um, I feel it that you're an empath too. You know, I'm an empath. I just feel things, you know, people and everything, and I. I just feel that, you know, the woman in the mirror, um, I've kept it the same name for the past, well, this is the se second year, God has, hasn't told me to change it. And especially during the pandemic, because as you mentioned, a lot of women, we are single, we're still, you know, we're not out yet, things are lifting, but we're still going through different things, different feelings, different emotions or what have you, impacted by work and family and all that, you know, deaths and all that stuff. And I just feel like God is going to use you to really bless us um, because he always does. I mean, you, you've been, you've been a part of this for a while. And every time you've stepping out, stepped out and um, provided a word for us, it's always been on time. So I remember you asked, okay, Ramonda, what, what, what should I talk about? What's the subject? I was like, whatever God tells you to share with us, because <laughs> I know whatever you place on your heart is going to be for us. So I'm so excited that you're going to share with us on Monday, Ashley. Thank you again. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much. I'm looking forward to it. It's so funny because maybe about a week, a week or so ago, um, literally, I just like woke, like I just woke up immediately one day and I felt like the Lord just kind of dropped something in my spirit. And I was like, Okay, Laura, you showed up early. You don't know me. You coming that early, but I can't see what you're doing. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, thank you so much. It's going to be good. And um I um I've always told you what I think about you and and just how much you mean to me as my friend, as my sister, and just how beautiful you are and just how anointed you are. And, uh, you know, we've already spoke about our times together. And I'm just so grateful for my sisterhood with you. And my daughters love you. They always ask about you every time um, I, I talk to them on the phone. They'll And I tell them that we we hung out. They ask me, oh, how is she doing and everything? So you you are held in the highest regards, not only in my family, but in, I know, a lot of people's lives and stuff. Just the the, the light that you have when you come around and just the joy. And, um, but then there's a part of Ashley that's just really quiet and very observant and just watches. Am I telling the truth? I am. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and just so humbled. And, you know, like I had to ask her a few times to do the interview because she's just, you're just, you're not for the spotlight. 
You know, oh, you're no. not. I know that. And I, I love you for that. But I, I love you even more because you know that God wants to use you and you're answering his call. And I, and I, I love you for that, for answering the call. And um, I can't say enough about your mom. Your mom is amazing to me. Do send her my love. I can't say enough about your pastor, Portia. She's a phenomenal woman of God. Both are, both are fire. You're just so blessed to have these pillars in your life. Yeah. And um, you just, you're, you're just, you know, going, you're coming up right after them, you know, and, and I've always heard people say that when people are mentors, whomever you're mentoring, your ceiling should be their floors. Like you want more for that person that you're pouring into. And right. I know that that's what they want for you. And you're just living it. You're just living it. And I know that your family is very proud of you. And um, I just want to say thank you again for this time with me, for this interview. I don't know um, if you could just share something with a young lady today that, you know, maybe faced with oppositions and, and challenges and don't know which way to turn and maybe feeling all alone. Mm -hmm. What would you say to her? What would you share? I know you're going to break this down on Monday, but today, right now, what would you say to her? Um, <laughs> I feel like my response in some ways feels a little cliche. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would just encourage any young lady that is feeling down, discouraged, alone, um, just to, to run to the Lord. <laughs> Um, and I say that because I think for me, I have been through uh, so many situations in my life and kind of similar to what you said earlier about how you can encourage people all you want, but until they have that experience for themselves. Yeah. Um, and I think until we can really encounter God as a lover of our souls, as, until we can encounter God as the good shepherd, as a refuge, until we can experience him in that way, for ourselves, um, you know, nothing else is going to satisfy, nothing else is going to meet the needs. Um, you know, my homegirls, my sisters, I love them. I'm so grateful for them, but there is a longing inside of me that they cannot feel and they cannot satisfy with all the support that they provide. Um, and I think that, you know, one thing I've learned is just, you know, the Lord, the Lord provides that. <clears throat> um, I think I'll just use as an example, I think of times in my life where there were, um, you know, people in ministry that, you know, I looked up to or there were uh, people that were that I perceived to be mentors or wanted to be mentors in my life. I um, mean, you know, I wanted their approval so bad yeah. and it took me not having their approval to realize that I don't need their approval. <laughs> it took them disapproving of me. Mm. For me That's to good. realize that the only approval I need is from the Lord. Yes. And so I think that when we talk about, you know, loneliness or, or other struggles like that, uh, we, we, we want, we always want some type of coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to find something to help us cope with it, whether it's Chick-fil-A, whether it's a man, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, a drink, whatever it is, we want to find something to cope. And I yeah. think that that deeper satisfaction that we're longing for, it can only be found in God. And for me, that mm -hmm. comes from uh, journaling. Mm -hmm. I journal a lot to God. I journal my prayers to God. I talk to him as if I'm talking to one of my sisters <laughs> in Christ. Um, I'm just real and I'm just raw. I just be mm -hmm. like, Lord, I feel like a hot mess right now. Mm -hmm. um, he understands, he hears. Yeah. So I think just having those very real and vulnerable moments with God. And I think for me, um, just to kind of touch on that writing piece a little bit, um, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to verbally express to the Lord, like when I'm feeling deep emotions, but sometimes mm -hmm. I just journal and I write it out to him. Um, and <clears throat> I notice a difference between my journaling prayers and my verbal prayers. Mm -hmm. My verbal prayers tend to be more, you know, for people or, you know, Lord help me with this or with that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes my journaling prayers, those are the, the deeper ones. Deeper. You know, obviously I, I express things to the Lord uh, verbally as well that are deep. Yeah. Um, but I think just having that quality time with God and just giving him those emotions. And I just sit in my journal and I just write and cry and mm -hmm. cry and write. <laughs> um, but he meets me there and he comforts yes. me and he gives me what I need. Um, so yeah. that would be my encouragement. That's good. There is no substitute. There is no substitute to Jesus. And 
Oh my goodness. Like you said, there's, there's a, a place within you that no matter what you do buy, accomplish in life, it cannot be fulfilled. I don't yeah. care what it's just, it's crazy. And I, I know what you're talking about. And um, it's just like, sometimes I feel like, uh, like you yearn for something, like there is something that, and you can't even, you can't, it's nothing that's tangible. You can't touch it or whatever, but it's just him. Only he can complete us. And um, until we all just really walk in that, I feel that um, we will just, there will be some that will continue to wander and try to search and find, but God is good. God is yeah. so good. He's so wonderful. There's no one like him. There's no one like you, my sister. And um, I'm so blessed to call you my sister. And again, thank you so much for sowing seeds into this ministry, for praying over this ministry, for prophesying over this ministry, because <laughs> you did. And um, I just, I love you. And I thank you for all that you have done. And um and our friendship. And I just pray that God would continue to cultivate it to what he has called it to be. So God bless you. We will see you on Monday, the woman in the mirror for those who wants to join and have not received the invitation, please do reach out to the email that I'm going to put at the end of the video. And also um, you will also see more information about sister uh, Ashley Nation. I will include her bio. So thank you again, my beautiful sister. God bless you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.